two weeks ago, I was in uh, Indiana, um, my dad's birthday to celebrate my father's birthday. He turned 80 years old, so we were there to celebrate his birthday. Very interesting times. Learn a lot. Um, had a lot of opportunities to resent, but I didn't. And I had fun. I had fun. One thing I realized is that, now I won't say never, ever, ever, but if you break up with your spouse, your husband or wife, and you have children, you should not get married to anyone else until those kids are adults and on their own because it really leaves a scar in their hearts as adults, especially if you marry somebody who already have children by somebody else. And they feel abandoned. And it takes a long time to get over that. And I saw that. I didn't feel that way, but I saw my other brothers and sisters feeling that way. And I'm like, it's amazing the spiritual scar that a father and a mother can live, leave upon their children. Because even if a mother did that, it would still hurt the kids, you know what I'm saying? And I saw that, and I'm like, wow, that's amazing to see that, the spiritual impact that our parents can have on us because we are a spirit, and we are impacted spiritually. And if you don't really know how to overcome that, it stays with you. And then if the, if, uh, the stepmother play games at all, it'll just make it even worse. Or the stepfather should play games. So I, I realized that. So if anybody out there or here in this room, if you have children and you're divorcing for whatever reason, do not get married. Don't even date until your kids are grown. Because in all reality, there's no reason to be dating or getting married. The kids need to come first. I realized that. Then I went to Alabama to the family reunion, and uh, when some people heard that I was coming, they sat up some speaking engagement for me while I was there. Uh, well, the first thing that happened is that I hosted the family reunion. I, I was surprised that I was able to do that or allowed to do it because in my family, up until that time, I thought I was the only Republican. So uh, I have uh, Huckabee was there as well, right down the hall. The Republican Party of Ufall, Barber County, down in Ufall, Alabama, was hosting Huckabee. And they had asked me to speak there, too, but I couldn't because of the reunion thing. So what I did was I told my family members when I opened it up the our event, I said I was invited to speak at Huckabee's event right down the hall. But since this was happening, I couldn't. But I told them that I'm going to register my entire family as Republicans when the reunion is over. <laughs> and they go, oh, shut up. They were getting all mad just from that. <laughs> and then when they got mad at me, I said, oh, I, I love teasing Democrats. They can't take anything. <laughs> that didn't help it either. Move on. They were like all upset. And at the end of the reunion, well, just before the end, I asked them to show their hands up. Any Republican in the house? Nobody raised their hand. But when it was all over, I had two cousins who I had never met before my first time meeting them. They secretly told me that they were Republicans, but they, they said there was no way I was going to raise my hand in this crowd. And so, <laughs> so they were afraid to let my family member know that they were Republicans. Isn't that amazing? Uh, rep black Republicans are hated that much that even in your own family, you can't let them know that you are unless you're ready to deal with it. But I had a whole lot of fun messing with them. I just messed with them through the whole thing. And I had a hoot net. I had them laughing, too. I had a lot of fun. And then I was invited to speak at a church in Midway, Alabama, in the city of Spring Hill. And it was an all-white church. I used to pass that church every morning going to school, on the school bus. And I remember looking out the window at that church, and I've never seen anybody go in and out of that church in the whole 12 years that I went past. <laughs> I never saw one soul go in or out. And uh, I realized now maybe because it was Monday through Friday when I was going past, it, past this, that uh, church, and they invited me to speak there at that particular church. And when my family members found out that I was speaking, they went off. They're like, don't do it. These people are racist. 
They would not allow you in there before. I'm not going in there. I don't tell them what they're going to do to me. They were, <laughs> they were like really against it, and nobody went with me. You know, I was inviting them to go just for the fun of it. And this church has a lot of history because it, it, the slaves used to go there too. The white people sat downstairs, and they had a balcony for the slaves upstairs to sit down and be a part of the service. They even have some uh, World War, no, they have some uh, Civil War soldiers buried there, unknown, unnamed soldiers buried there, and they'd have them buried on this tree. They plant these two trees at the time. They buried the unknown soldiers, and the trees are tall, and they plant benches there so you can sit there and sometimes have church service in favor of those guys, support of those guys. But a lot of white folks showed up, and they had a good time. They, they, they were inspired. They looked at themselves, and they understand better now what's going on with the races. So when they announced that I was coming, a lot of people showed up to that church. And I said to my family members, if you are of God, how are you going to refuse to go and talk to the white folks just because their ancestors did you wrong? You know, you can't be of God and be hating like that. Even if, let's say that, even if they were actually the slave masters themselves and an opportunity came to go and speak the truth to them, I would still go because we're not allowed to hold anything against anyone. So I had a good time there. And then Sunday night, I, I was invited to speak at another white church in Ufall, Alabama. And that was good, too. I was challenged in that church by some liberal Christian women, white women, about... Uh, women, re, the government paying for contraception for women. They're like, why you don't want that to happen? I said, the same reason I wouldn't want to pay for contraception is my daughters decided they wanted to have sex. And they like come to me and say, you know what, Dad, I'm ready to have sex. Would you pay for the contraception? What I'm going to say, yes. And uh, so they were going back and forth with me. They tried to prevent me from speaking there. They printed out some articles and passing them out before I got there. And so I said to the pastor, Wow, your, your congregation making you look bad. <laughs> but he knew about them already. That was fun. I had a good time there. And then I had to stay an extra night and spoke at the Quinas luncheon on, at a noon. And then at, that night, the Republican Party of Barber County had an event. They were having their meeting, and they invited me to come. It was a packed house. We had a really, really good time. So that's where I've been. And so this weekend I was in uh, Wichita Falls uh, speaking to um, a constitutional party there uh, yesterday. And that was fun too. Had a good time. Getting the word out there. I'm ready to be out on the road putting it out there. You know what I'm saying? Because people are hearing the truth and they're being inspired by it. And I thank God for those opportunities. I go wherever they open up. And we're getting the word out there. Getting the truth out there, saving lives and families. I had an elderly woman in Wichita Falls tell me that she came over yesterday at the end of the event, and she said to me, the last time you were here, you said in your speech, never to hate, always forgive, and that there is no reason to ever hate. And she said, I was hating somebody when you said that. And I said I was never going to forgive them. But when you said there's never a reason to hate, I realized I needed to apologize because I was wrong. And she said when she went to apologize, while apologizing to this person, she realized that she was more at fault than the person that she was hating, just simply by apologizing for hating. I'm like, wow, that's good. And that is the case a lot of times. It's more you than the person that you're hating. Matter of fact, it's more you than the person that you're hating. It may be all you than the person that you're hating. Because if somebody's doing you wrong and you hate them, it, it's going to affect you. You start acting out. But if you didn't hate them, it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with them. It's on them and it's about them. So she learned that lesson. I thought, wow, that's very interesting. For more information or to purchase a copy of this show, visit us on the web at www.bondinfo.org or call 1-800-411-BOND.